in support of the vaccines. And um, Dr. Jashankar has explained the two different vaccines that are available, the different uh, modes of keeping them. One needs more refrigeration, one needs less. He also explained that four other vaccines are under process and should be uh, ready quite soon by late March, early April. So we have we have uh, suggested to our African friends the uh, staggered manner in which um, they could figure out their own requirements, communicate them to us, and we will ensure that uh, those uh, requirements are met. Uh, well, I'm, I'm looking forward to the whole round table. I have seen with interest uh, the uh, people who will be speaking and the areas in which they will be speaking. I'm waiting to hear. Uh, the COMESA as one of the eight regional economic commissions of Africa is an important entity. And um, there are other economic commissions with which too we have uh, ongoing close relations. Um, so, with that, I think I would just say that it's a pleasure to be here. I'm very happy uh, that uh, Her Excellency Ambassador Tisita could also make it here. I commend um, Shri Asabji for this initiative and I look forward to going away a bit more enriched, uh, finding out about the Indian exporters from Southern India, their issues, what we can do to make this. Uh, this aspect of our relationship, the trade aspect of our relationship, more important and more dynamic. Uh, so, thank you, thank you very much. I look forward to the round table. First of all, I would like to say thank you uh, very much for um, Dr. Asif for organizing this special event and also for the India Africa Trade Council and the India Economic Trade Organization. Uh, as it has been said, India and Africa have had a long years relationship and the relationship can be uh, seen from both political, economic and technical and also diplomatic collaboration and uh, there are so many Indian who are living in different places in Africa and among all the trade relations between India and Africa is increasing from time to time. And when we come specifically to Ethiopia, Ethiopia has started its relation with India in the first century, where the Indian trader used to go to Ethiopia to sell their silks and uh, spices, whereas they used to buy golds and different kinds of precious material from Ethiopia. So, this uh, long years relationship has grown into a uh, better uh, diplomatic level and Ethiopia is the first African country that has started it is embassy, established its embassy in, in, in India in 1994, in 1948, just one year after the independence of India. This really shows the historical relationship between India and uh, Ethiopia. So I believe, uh, even if there are currently, uh, there are uh, more than uh, 600 Indian companies that are operating in Ethiopia, working in different kind of uh, uh, sectors, but I believe that for... But I can tell you that I have been living in Africa and African countries for 30 years before I met my own <clears throat> in India. And as it so happened, my first two years living in India were in China. Um, what it allows me to have is having working rather than 37 countries across the African continent out of the 55 countries we have is a good understanding um, of how things work or how they don't work, um, what can be done and what should be done. Um, it is also my opinion that whatever work is done between uh, India and uh, any African state is that the partners are to be of equal standing, that there is not one junior partner in it. Um, the pluses are, of course, that both the, the countries of Africa and India all are 
developing countries, and so is India in developing countries. So it is not a sort of top-down kind of um, attitude, I think, that will be encouraged. There, that we have um, a Comesa here joining us with a office in Kenya is all significant because the, uh, the entrance to South India by sea is Chennai. And I look forward to be part of this incredible journey that is about to be undertaken more, more vigorously than ever before for bringing um, the African continent and the mystic India together. Thank you. We have explored uh, last year the project of uh, airport in Djibouti for which the GMR uh, had connected meetings to build a private airport and now we are finalizing aspects of uh, in a post-COVID, a lot of plans that happened pre-COVID uh, you know, are uh, going to be you know, altered, are you know, being re-looked at and uh, you know, modified. So we are, uh, you know, due to the economical aspects of how things are also happening, it's a global thing. So, uh, the title of a delegation would come as of visiting Ethiopia, Djibouti, and now we are going to go to Namibia, uh, Zimbabwe. And how many of them are from Tamil Nadu? All of them, uh, around 25 of them will be from Tamil Nadu, and we'll have around 5 from uh, Hyderabad. Can you probably divide some names? Of the companies? Of the companies, like the companies there. Yes, I, mean, I have a list we can share that with you. of such kind of uh, trade council would be uh, an eye-opener and also a gate, a gateway to just go and uh, look for what is really going on in Ethiopia because in Ethiopia and also in Africa because uh, Ethiopia, uh, India and Africa really share uh, a lot of commonalities. There are many things you can call it in culture, you can call it in, 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 in different kind of uh, uh, sentiments, relation, and also even the fight against colonialism and whatever kind of thing. So, taking all this into consideration, the formation of such kind of uh, trade council would really help to strengthen the relationship between Africa and India, and also specifically when we come to Ethiopia, since we still have a very a strong relation with India, we want uh, to use this initiative as a means to go into uh, the second level, and thank you so much. Thanks, has been very immense uh, on the aspect of, uh, you know, the health uh, collaborations that we have made. Uh, apart from that, if you look at the whole region as such, the Africa Free Trade Agreement that is launched in January 2021, which will be uh, implemented by 2030, there is an action plan. So the whole region is going to be completely in line. Everybody has, uh, you know, their own needs. That we have got neighboring countries, uh, next to Ethiopia, we have Djibouti. Djibouti has its own strategic relations with India. Ethiopia has its own uh, relations with India. So Ghana has its own relations. Namibia, Zimbabwe. So every uh, just like Mr. Chris said, 54 countries. We all have, you know, important, different, different, successful stories with all countries, very equally as per those matter. Thank you. Thanks. So uh, that's one. The second, so which means agro pharmaceuticals and astrocyticals will be one of the focus areas uh, in the relationship which I'm going to take it forward. And particularly from Tamil Nadu and uh, Pondicherry in Kerala, I think uh, all of us agree that we have focus on uh, agro uh, results. So, uh, for example, uh, I can tell you a few products which you are trying to uh, know, uh, introduce. For example, for the eye, uh, vitamin A is a, a key component. Uh, it's a product called beta carotene. Beta carotene is uh, typically manufactured worldwide, but the same beta carotene is available in blue green algae, which can be you know, developed in lands in uh, Kerala and uh, uh, Tamil Nadu. So these are the very good substitutes for uh, chemical products. So like this uh, with uh, African countries, particularly Comaisan countries, we can definitely have a, a long way to go. And I am sure with the size of these two uh, continents, subcontinent and the continent, I think uh, we will take a, a, a very good space in the uh, global map uh, shortly. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, other parts of uh, South India. Today we have the pleasure of having uh, uh, Madam Ambassador Her Excellency from Ethiopia. Glad. Thank you, Madam, for your valuable time.
been joining us today. The round table will be starting uh, subsequent to this and uh, you will be getting uh, more data and more inputs uh, from Madam regarding Ethiopia and their relations. Uh, our relations secretary also will be joining us in some time. Uh, so you, uh, the lead has been given to you and uh, we will be glad uh, to give you any kind of uh, clarifications and uh, questions that you might have. So uh, this uh, region of Tamil Nadu and in South India, we are very far from Delhi. And uh, an extension of all the trade and commerce development for various cities of South India uh, is being initiated by uh, the office here. And uh, we are hoping and looking for a lot of cooperation uh, from our Minister of External Affairs and also from the various embassies. And Madam Excellency from the Kitchen Embassy is giving us all the support for uh, developing these trade relations uh, and uh, other social and cultural aspects of uh, building and strengthening these bilateral relationships. So I would, uh, I would leave the floor to you to uh, ask any questions that you might have. In the press conference, we are also joined by Mr. Chris Paul, who is uh, spent 20 years in Africa and is the Vice Chairman of the India Africa Trade Council. And uh, he is also going to be a very rich resource on understanding India and African trade relations. He is here and we finally have our host in Tamil Nadu, uh, Mr. Ram Krishnan, who is going to be uh, an appointed director today of the India Trade Council office, the Africa Trade Council, specifically uh, addressing the Komisar region uh, because Africa is a very big continent, a very big region and uh, we have divided into different zones and so we have got uh, the Commissar Director and he is going to be uh, taking a lot of initiatives in building these uh, multilateral relationships with different countries and uh, today our focus country is Ethiopia and uh, it's a very important country for us, for India therefore we are going to be looking forward for all the support and for all the encouragement from our experts uh, I thank you very much and I can uh, allow you to take it forward. Mr. Moy, you can take it forward.